Here are solutions to homework set number 8 for EC111. The first problem looks at an inductor. If this is the current through the inductor, find the voltage. Well, capacitors are integrators, inductors are differentiators. The voltage is the derivative of the current, times L. So if L is 1, it's just the derivative. So initially, the slope is 0, the voltage will be 0. Now the slope is it changes by 2 amps in 1 second, so it jumps at plus 2. Now it drops down 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 amps in 1 second, drops down to minus 4. It's then flat. Increases by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in 2 seconds, jumps up to 3.5. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, drops down to minus 5. Then back to 0. So that'd be the voltage across the inductor. The red line is the current. Basically, inductors are differentiators. So here's what it should look like when you're done. Problem two. Looks at an RLC circuit. This would be like a circuit board trace or a waveguide or cars in traffic. They can be modeled as an RL circuit. The differential equation for this is a little bit tricky. Uh, one way to do that is if I take node one, I know that I1 is IA plus IB plus IC. I know that I1 is CDBDT. I know for the inductor, the voltage across that inductor is L times the derivative of the, of the current. So this voltage, V0 minus V1. Oh, correction. Take this guy, differentiate it. And I get that equation. Now I know for a inductor, the voltage is L di dt. So that's V0 minus V1. I can substitute. Here's the derivative of IA, plug it in. Derivative of IC, again, V is L di dt. And for a resistor, so when you plug it all in, I get C times the second derivative of voltage. Is Here's the current from the left, from the first inductor. Here's the current from the resistor. Current from the right, from the second inductor. Now group all the terms. And you'll have the same equation at node 2, node 3, and so on. The oddball is the last node because there is no inductor on the right. So I only have one term instead of 2 over LC. I just get 1 over LC. And there is no term on the right. If you plug in numbers for this semester's homework, I'll get 16 minus 32, 16. So those are the coupled differential equations that describe a four-stage RLC circuit. To solve, that's actually kind of hard to solve. It's a little bit easier if you do it in MATLAB. In MATLAB, I can do a numerical solution. And kind of here's what I'm doing. I put this in a for loop. Um, run for 19 seconds. The first node is function of v0, v1, v2. From then on, node 2 is a function of nodes 1, 2, and 3, i minus 1, i, and i plus 1. Put that in for loop, I can change the number of nodes just by changing this number. On problem two, if you just have four nodes, I want to see how it behaves. And if you recall from the heat equation, if I have something that satisfies the heat equation from last week, it just warms up and stays there. Wave equation is very different. If something satisfies the wave equation, if I kick it, it just bounces around over and over again. So that's the behavior of the four node system. And if you plot the voltages versus time, they just bounce all over. Problem four says, now increase that to 30 nodes. And see what happens. At the last node, this guy right here, I've got my circuit with a resistor capacitor at the last node. And I'm going to terminate it with a resistance. If I leave that open, that last node stays unchanged. So let's do that. Let's go over here, increase this to 30 nodes. The last node is just 0.02. I haven't added anything to the last node. See how it behaves. So if I run this, I snap it on the left. I launch a wave. This is why it's called the wave equation. Again, very different than the heat equation. The wave bounces to the right. 
hits the right wall, and then I get a thing called a reflection. In this case, if I have no resistance or infinite resistance on the right, um, I get a plus reflection. Well, if I take the endpoint and instead of terminating it with you know, 0.02, this is one of our RC, meaning R is really large. And let's instead of running it for 19 seconds, let's just run it for nine. What I'm trying to do is run it long enough that I see the reflection. So right now, time's going forward. I hit the right wall. And that wasn't quite long enough. Let's do it for, say, 12 seconds. I wanted to go long enough to see the reflection. So we'll launch the wave. Hits the right wall. And there's your reflection. And it stops at 12 seconds. OK, so 0.01 or 0.02 causes a plus reflection. Let's try 100. Suppose at that last node I have another resistor in parallel with it, you know, right here. So these in parallel give you that 1 over RC is 100. Basically, this R is really small. Then what happens? Well, I can try it. Launch a wave. If you notice on the right endpoint, now it is very stiff. That large number means it doesn't want to move. This moves a little bit, but not much. Just barely moves. If it's too stiff, I get a minus reflection. So what we're looking for in this homework is the Goldilocks number. So 100 is too big, 0.02 is too small. Let's try other numbers. Let's try 10. When you take electromagnetics, you'll be able to calculate what resistance, what is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, what resistance terminates it with no reflection. You'll do that when you get to 351 EMAG. Here you can just use trial and error. So 10 is too big. I have a minus reflection. Let's try 3. Can I hit the right wall? And that's pretty close. A slight positive reflection, maybe four. Yeah, that's pretty close to zero. So what I want is one over RC equals four. I know what C is, I can solve for R. And when you're all said and done, I know how to terminate it. That will stop reflections. Kind of a sidelight. The reason you do that is suppose there's a windstorm. Let's go back over here. Wrong file. Instead of this, let's just have a winds blowing V0 is 10 times sine of if i have a windstorm hitting that launches waves excites the transmission line or excites the bridge if i have reflections I get the waves interacting. So they have the wave coming left to right, interfering with the reflection, and you get these standing waves. That's kind of what was happening at Valparaiso Narrows Bridges. The standing waves will eventually cause metal fatigue and the bridge to collapse. If you terminate it correctly, let's slow this down a little bit. So I get rid of reflections. Then you don't get those standing waves. The wind excites the bridge, the waves travel along the bridge, hit the endpoint. If I terminate right, all the energy that hits the endpoint gets absorbed. 
and you avoid the standing waves. So that is homework set number eight for ECE 111.